Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and I am extremely excited for the next half hour or so because we have Joe Hoft, who is a driving force over at the Gateway Pundit. And the Gateway Pundit has really been at the forefront of telling the truth about such important events as January 6th, the 2020 elections, the Hunter Biden laptop, and so much more. And here to discuss all that and the second part in his book series here, The Steal, which of course you can't talk about in mainstream social media. In fact, they've labeled the Gateway Pundit fake news. Folks, more real news comes out of the Gateway Pundit in a day than you will see in national news media in a month. So it is my pleasure to have with me today, Joe Hoft. Joe, how are you doing today, sir? Hey, I'm, I am doing great, Jason. Thanks for having me here. Look forward to it. So let's talk about the Gateway Pundit a bit, because this is a news outlet that started in 2004 by your brother. You got heavily involved, I'd say, around 2017, became a driving force there. What was it about the website and the political environment that drove you into that direction to start covering this stuff? That's a great question, Jason. Maybe I'll just give you a brief history of the Gateway Pundit for your listeners um so jim started it in around 2004 he was just upset with what the media was reporting then and and so he decided to uh, start his own website it was back then there was very few websites breitbart was one a couple others and um anyways he started writing and people started giving him little kisses along the way he wasn't making any money he did this for about eight years before he really started making enough money to kind of step away from his day job so he had a day job this whole time and then um and then, uh, yeah, it got successful. It grew, and I just was—I uh, had a different route. So Jim's working on the Gateway Pond, and it's growing over here. My, 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 I guess uh, history, my, my, my stream was in the corporate realm, and I was, uh, I was uh, working for a Fortune 500 company from about 2000 on, and um, was in the auditing team. I was getting sent around the world to view and audit uh, various uh, businesses around the world and uh, entrusted by the board of directors to do so. And they wanted to know what's going on around the world because they can't all do that uh, from afar. And then also I um, uh, was in finance for a while. I oversaw the financial reporting for uh, multi-million dollar and billion dollar entities. So that was my stream. I've got 10 degrees in, and uh, and or designations that I've earned. And, uh, and um, so I was running the corporate path. Jim was building the Gateway Pundit. And then in about 2016, and we still talked every day, I was uh, I moved over to Hong Kong in 2011 or so. And I spent a decade over there working for the same corporation. I was an executive in, uh, in Hong Kong. And my job was actually to set up an audit team throughout Asia Pacific for this uh, Fortune 500 company. So that's what I was doing there. At the same time, I'm following, you know, I'm talking to Jim all the time. And and we both fell in love with Trump, and uh, in 2016, we really backed him. And that's when I started writing for Jim. I, I uh, Actually, my first post was I saw that Ted Cruz was going to be eliminated in a month, and I predicted it to the day. And I told Jim this, and he said, Joe, you should write that up. So I did, and I put it up at the Gateway Pundit, and Drudge Report picked it up and put it up as one of their top stories. And um, that, got, that got the fire going, you know? And um, so then uh, I helped and tried to do about a post a day, but still I had my full-time job and position and uh but still I, I continued that up through 2020 and then in 2020 i i uh, stepped away from the corporate role came back to the states and then happened to be here uh in the 2020 election so i appreciate you mentioning you noting that i you know been writing uh, at least from 2017 yeah i had some we had some you know blockbusters even back then and uh i really was attracted some people were attracted to my writing i got some really great uh, sources and we started destroying the Mueller uh, sham. And then we uh, actually, I saw the Hunter Biden laptop be before the election of 2020. And I reported on that, uh, some key points in that, some of the just salacious, uh, disgusting stuff that Hunter was doing uh, because we didn't have enough time to really dig into the financials. So, we, so I did that. And then uh, the election came along and it was all election uh, all the time since then. But I really think my, you know, my stream, all those things that I did leading up to this, whether it be presenting in front of audit committees or corporations or meeting individuals and executives around the world, all that helped me. And it set, it set me up for, uh, you know, success in reporting on this election. So, yeah. So when we've got these uh, fake fact checkers and the, and the far left, you know, 
immature media uh, saying things like, oh, the Gatemate pundits conspiracy or whatever. Well, I'd, I'd put our record on the line compared to anybody's. We're not going to put, I'm not going to put anything up that I'm not convinced is absolutely accurate. And, and that's what I've done. And, uh, and I think we've gotten a lot of street cred as a result. So um, now it's one of the biggest websites in the country. Um, it, Jim, last year was our biggest year. We had uh, almost a billion hits. Wow. And so yeah. it's very impressive. Yeah. And and it shows you that you can push past this corporate censorship. You mentioned the Mueller report and mm -hmm. a lot of people tend to forget that big tech really started to show its uh, true colors in mass with the censorship of just the name Eric. In fact, the first video that was actually wasn't taken down. I didn't get a strike, but they made it private across the world, so essentially I was the only one that was going to be able to view it, was when Louis Gomer in one of the hearings dared to say that he wanted to hear a list of names come and um, actually give their testimony amongst them, Eric. And for that alone, I started to see, okay, well, they're going to start pulling stuff. It was not very long after that. I was fully demonetized. And just this morning, yet another video was taken down. Gateway Pundit isn't even allowed to have a presence on YouTube, and I believe that your brother was banned from Twitter last year. How how much success have you found found going around these mainstream uh, social media platforms and getting th getting on things like Truth Social or Getter, all these alternative platforms? Do you, do you still feel like you know you're being censored to the point where it's harder to reach those that aren't familiar? with the gateway pundit or through those, are you finding a new audience? Hmm. Yeah. Another great question. Um, well, I saw Jim in 2016, Jim was really instrumental in uh, bringing Hillary down. As a matter of fact, we saw a couple uh, studies that were done that, that it, they were really hit pieces to say, you know, gateway pundit, and <clears throat> excuse me, others are fake news. Uh, but they're, but the, uh, the data that they had showed that gateway pundit was, fourth largest conservative website and uh, and was competing with uh, the likes of ABC, Fox, CNBC, and NBC, and all these others. There's very few entities that were bigger in regards to Facebook shares and Twitter shares. So what happened right after this 2016 election is they, they started censoring. And I did a study for Jim about a year later, and we determined that about 5% of the volume of the top sites uh, on social media prior to 2016 election it was all that was left, five percent. So these some of these sites, their whole platform was on uh, Facebook, and uh, they were just gone. So Young Cons and a couple of these sites gone, never heard from them anymore. They're, they they de, you know deplatformed them and they're done. And uh, then you saw you saw Zuckerberg go in front of Congress and just sit there and just with that you know non emotional face of his and say, oh no, we don't censor, you know. And that was really repulsive to tell you the truth. But same thing with Twitter. Same thing before the election of 2016, we could tell how po you know powerful a post was by the number of shares. And then they started censoring. And then pretty soon that measurement wasn't there anymore. But the, the, the remedy was continue to share the truth, continue to fight every day, share the truth, share the truth, share the truth. And, um, and yeah, YouTube kicked Jim off. If you go to Google Gateway Pundit, you'll get five pages of garbage before you might even get the website page. Um, this is this is today's uh, you know fascist uh, communist uh, regimes that are running our social media platforms. And um, but we just kept doing the truth, and that and then that was the answer. And then I guess probably we're we're given the given a gift in 2020 when nobody else would report on the election. And, you know, we're just sitting back, just pounding through this stuff. No, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. And it goes on and on and on. And so anyways, Jason, that's what led me to my couple books here is it's really a bunch of posts that we put up at the Gateway Pundit primarily uh, that support, uh, you know, what, what we're saying, what I'm trying to say in these books. So, yeah, it's, you just keep growing. And then like last every year, the Gateway Pundit's had more numbers. So you just keep getting quality, you know, per, you know, providing quality and timeliness and uh, and then yeah and I think that's the answer you just keep doing it every day it's uh, something that's uh, it's that's the American model just do it every day and uh, and you'll succeed so you know young guys like you you got a you got a you know world ahead of you I'm so. not that young Jim I'm 43 <laughs> years old 
I'm already feeling it. You know, I've been in this game for 15 plus years now, uh, yeah. making documentary films and kind of doing my thing. And, and the censorship is really what alarms me the most. You know, you mentioned, yeah. for instance, Google searches and mm -hmm. down rankings. You know, Google started off with its phrase, don't be evil. Now, a lot of people didn't understand at the time that they were funded by NQTEL, the uh, division of the CIA that, again, invests in technology, that they had cut deals not only with the NSA apparatus, but NASA in quantum computing and AI. And I would argue to those that say, well, you know, they're a company and they're privately t traded. They are a technopoly. They are a Trojan horse civilian system. They have the number one search engine in the world, Google. They have the number two search engine in the world, which is YouTube, which is also the number one video platform in the world. They also have the number one operating system on the most devices in the world, which is Android. How could you tell me that isn't cornering the market and mm -hmm. having an unfair share in what is able to be shared amongst regular people? It has now gotten to the point where there are not only down rankings, but it is almost impossible to find things that are archived even from mainstream media that are over a decade old. How do you deal with that as a news organization that is trying to give some history or context to an event? You know the stories out there, yet it's so hard to find. You've mm. often got to go to, I would say, what is it, archive.org and find, mm. you know, the cached version of this because we are seeing a lot of really mainline his, historical records being scrubbed in real time. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I did a post the other day and I was trying to find just some information from a couple of years ago. And I was just like, you know, I could not find it on Google. It just, you know, it just wasn't available. And uh, so I, you know, the, the thing that I've done a lot is, uh, and this is kind of, un, you know, unique, but I'll go to the Gateway Pundit and do queries on the Gateway Pundit. There's a search engine up in the right that you can click on and do searches. And um, that has worked really well. And uh, so I was able to find some pieces on this topic, and I can't even remember what the topic was now, and uh, be able to add some, you know, some history to this whole situation. And so that, that's something that I've done a lot, is I'll do a lot of searches on the Gateway Pundit itself just to find prior stories. And, uh, and quite often, we've usually, a lot of these stories have been uh, written about before. Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and what you just saw was a 10 or so minute sample of my interview with Joe Hoft. If you want to see the whole thing goes on for another half an hour, you can watch it uncensored and free over at rumble.com and rockfin.com. We should be putting the audio version up over at Podbean later in the afternoon. And I want to encourage people to check this out because it's important to see how a media operation begins and how it gets to the point where it starts to influence the conversation. And the Gateway Pundit has certainly done that. And as I said in the intro, has really done some great work on various stories that the mainstream media has outwardly lied about and obfuscated. Let's be honest. So if you want to support this broadcast, you can do so with the links down below. You can buy me a coffee. You can be a premium member on Rockfin, or you can just share the documentary films. But I do want to say that I think this interview is important. Go check it out on the alt platforms. I love you guys, and I will see you all on the flip side.